eight seconds. Fleeting for some, a lifetime for others. For a chosen few, it will be the time of their life. Two opponents, David and Goliath, hell-bent on doing whatever it takes. It is all-out war. One man's battle to tame the untamable. Almost a ton of meat and muscle ready to punish the unprepared. And the challenger, he will not yield to the beast. He will push through the pain. He with a will to reign supreme. This is the 2013 Brennan Clark Invitational. This is PBR Australia. One of the toughest things about be, being a professional athlete, especially in bull riding, is you've got to give up a lot of stuff and sacrifice a lot of stuff to live your dream. It's a dream far removed from the small country town of Morpeth, Australia, and seemingly a million miles to the PBR World Finals. Morpeth is a long way from Las Vegas, but uh, you know, the reason I left here was for an opportunity to see whether I was good enough to actually make it to Las Vegas one time. And uh, luckily for me, I was good enough to do it that one time and nine other times after that. The feeling of knowing the first time I made the PBR World Finals in Vegas was, you know, a big thing for me. Um, because I'd left everything in, with a big dream, not very much money, and not knowing whether I was good enough to make it. Anyone could be in my position. Uh, I'm not, not saying I'm any better or any more special than anybody else, but you know I definitely have worked hard at trying to build the sport, and I know that having the Brennan Clark Invitational is definitely one of the things that makes me realise and know that what I've done in the sport means something to somebody, and it's helping the younger generation out. It would mean everything to win. I mean, this is my last opportunity. I'm never going to get another chance ever to win it again. But all he needs one chance, so I suppose I'll take it. The Brendan Clark Invitational, named after the legendary Australian bull rider, is appropriately just down the road from his hometown of Morpeth in Newcastle, New South Wales, on the east coast of Australia. It's the third to last event of the PBR Australia Cup Series and sits at a pivotal point in the championship race. The PBR Australia Cup Series has seen a year-long battle come down to the final three events to see who will be crowned Australian PBR champion and represent their country at the PBR World Finals in Las Vegas. After a slow start to his campaign, last year's champion, David Kennedy, has found his form in recent weeks. In the last two events, I've been on 11 bulls and rode 10, so it's not a bad average for this late in the season. The last sort of five or six events has come together really good for me and uh, coming strong home. He once again sits atop the rankings looking for a history-making fourth year-end title. Looking to stop him? Four very real threats. David Mason from Bulladilla, New South Wales has had a breakout year and sits in second. Troy Wilkinson holds down third despite spending significant time in the USA this year, largely due to an impressive start to the season where he took out the Troy Dunn Invitational. 
Troy Dunn, his name on it makes it even uh, worth more. He's, I think he's the only Australian that's won a world title. And mate, um, just to win it in his honour, you know, it's a great, great thing and great achievement, yeah. Chris Lowe knows the competition will be tough, but still believes he can challenge. There's a few of them. They're all going pretty good, so any bull rider on their good days is as good as any, I guess. While Mick Ford remains an outside chance to take his first PBR Australia title at 28 years of age. These five, plus 17 others, will attempt to ride Australia's best bucking bulls, all hand-picked by a legend of the sport. PBR's motto always been, you know, the best, best bull riders matched up on the best bulls, so that's what we're trying to achieve. Our winner will receive the Montana Silversmith buckle as the Brendan Clark Invitational Champion and vital points leading into this year's final two events. Round one at the Brennan Clark Invitational and first up, Sam O'Connor from Tully, Queensland, currently sitting seventh in the series standings. Jockey weight type cowboy. He weighs only around about 58 kilos. Let's see what he does to North Queensland champion. How about we show him a little round of appreciation, Newcastle? Next to go is our first international rider with his first ride on an Australian bull, Gustavo Pedrero. And now when he nods forward, he gets forward of that power and strength. Let's ride with him, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, come on. Go ahead. What about the man from Mexico? So our first ridden bull of the event, and the crowd would be hoping for more of that as last year's local hero looked to replicate last year's results. After spending most of this year in America, Lachlan is too far back to challenge for the overall national title, but he'd desperately like to win back to back at the Brennan Clark Invitational. He's number 35 in the race for the PBR World Championship. Come on. Come on. Hey, look at this. He delivers yet again. And while a score of 79 points wasn't remarkable, he's one step closer to realizing his dream of going back to back. which left our second Mexican competitor, Francisco Morales, up next. I want you to get ready, come on. Sticky, come on. Oh! Flies through the air. An awkward dismount, and to add insult to injury, the judge's official time 7.97 seconds. It would be no score for Morales. Our first American invitee, Matt Bohan, matched up on a bull named Main Course, but all he ate was dirt. Mitchell Russell risked his own life. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is what he's paid for. Put your hands together for our protection clowns here tonight. What a job. This brought up our series leader, David Kennedy, looking to continue his good run of form. Last year I got to thinking about other riders and points and all the rest of it and I rode not very good at the end of the year when all the money was up and the points were up but uh, this year I'm just focusing on my bulls and getting those rode one at a time and just not looking any further ahead than the bull I got in the first round. That bull, Fox in Socks. As we move now to the number one man chasing 
Another Australian Championship, David Kennedy. Kennedy looking in serious discomfort after an uncharacteristically soft buck off. Threw my bull rope over the fence there before, and the bull pulled out my hand, and I just, I don't know what's wrong with it. It's a bit fat and bruised, so see what it is. I'm not sure. With the championship race so tight, David Kennedy heads to our medical staff to see what they can do. As he does, the second half of round one gets underway. And next out is our current Rookie of the Year championship leader, Cliff Richardson. His bull, Satan's pet. Cliff Richardson from the Hunter Valley in New South Wales. Come on, Newcastle! Oh yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, did you like it? The brother of last year's defending champion, happy to get his first ride out of the way. Last year I had to watch Lockie have all the fun. Good this year to have a go myself. Still going to ride two more, so see how we go. So good news for Cliff Richardson. Not so good news coming from our dressing rooms. Our championship leader unable to continue in tonight's competition. That's the worst luck I've ever had, you know. I just threw that rope over the fence and I got land on a bull's horn and wrapped around my finger and he just reefed on it. and. I don't know if he broke it or what he's done, but it's hurting. It's just bloody heartbreaking, so. With the championship lead to defend, he is adamant he'll be back very soon. Yeah, I'll either uh, get this finger fixed or go home and get on a bunch of bulls right-handed and I'll be back there next week. Brennan Clark Invitational, and with David Kennedy now out of proceedings, the championship picture changes dramatically. Coincidentally, the four riders closest in the championship race are yet to have their first round rides and fill out four of the next five starts. Currently fifth in the standings, Mick Ford knows making the championship round here is almost essential as he looks to keep his chances alive. His mount, Super Sid. This man is number five in the championship race. Oh, look at this. Oh, I tell you what, Newcastle, if you liked it, how about you let him know about it? The next to go and sitting second in the championship, Dave Mason. An event win with Kennedy out could catapult him into the series lead. However, his first round bull is a tough draw. Dark Knights, if ridden, could offer up plenty of points. You know, Dave Mason right now could turn things around. This could be a season changing ride. A missed opportunity for the 25-year-old from Bulladilla, New South Wales. The next rider up, 22-year-old young gun Troy Wilkinson, sitting in third in the championship and looking to make more of his opportunity to close the gap on Kennedy. His approach to his ride, Bad Manners, the same simple one he's been using all season. Just believing in yourself. You don't believe yourself, no one else will. It's kind of like that. The more confidence you have, the more try you're going to give, and yeah, the better you're going to ride. And here's the ball to do it on. Rude man as the John Gillen Sons. Come on, Troy. Keep going.
Newcastle, what do you say for Troy Wilkinson? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the numbers come through. We have a new leader, 85 and a half points. Troy's ride not only important in catching Kennedy, but also putting pressure on the next man up, Chris Lowe, who sits in fourth, just behind Troy in the season standings. Chris Lowe takes a trip on Sin City. Here he is, come on. He needs to ride, you need to cheer. Yeah. Well, Chris Lowe, number four in this Australian Championship race right now, cements his place. Yeah, we've just got to keep riding our bulls, I guess. And if you're riding your bulls, that's all you can do. Yeah, he's got a little bull. I've been on him once before, so I knew he was a good one to get on. And yeah, it's always good when you can come in and ride him. Lowe keeps pace with Wilkinson as they both close the championship gap on Kennedy. Next in the bucking chute is New Zealand rider Fraser Babington. The name of this bull is Wicked. I'm George Hempenstall, stock contractor from Yass in New South Wales. Watch the Kiwi. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to recognize our visitor from New Zealand, Fraser Babington. Babington keeps the roll going. His celebration almost as spectacular as his ride. You've got to show the true colors, eh? New Zealand, all the way, born and bred. One out of the way, on to the next one. One by one, jump for jump, buck for buck. Brendan Clark Invitational, an anticipation builds as the man everyone has come to see prepares himself on his mount. The man with his name on the event, likely to be the last night he will ride in his hometown of Newcastle. I've been away now almost 11 years. You fall in love with the sport and give it everything that you've got and it consumes your life for so long and then all of a sudden you realise it's not going to be there anymore. Bull riding is one of those sports where you never know what's coming next. I think the greatest lesson that I've learned from bull riding is that we don't take any of our time together for granted. Worst moment in my career is probably when I got hurt in Omaha. Boy, oh boy, the hits just keep on coming. There you see the contact. Both hind hooves come down right to the midsection. This is never easy to watch, and hopefully it looks much worse than it is. Mentally, it took a while uh, to get back to where I had to, to be at the top level. Um, but I guess the mongrel in me wasn't going to let me go out like that. It is scary. It's, you know, eight seconds of scariness, and then everything's fine again. See him get down inside, and then the bull just steps on him and stumbles on him. Oh, actually misses him. Brendan got pretty lucky there. The level that he's he's at, and you know what he's accomplished in, in his career, and I'm, I'm so proud of him. And I couldn't be happier with with this crazy road that life's led us down. Probably be a little bit of sweet. It'll probably be more of a relief than anything. But um, the thing about it is, you you got to go at the last one, just like you went at the first one.
Brennan Clark is set on his bull, Copperhead Road. Copperhead Road is the bull. All right, come on, let's hear you. A comfortable ride for Clark. However, the dismount goes less than smoothly. I tell you what, folks, go ahead. As the bull underperformed, Clark is offered a re-ride and a chance to improve his 78-point score. Oh, that bull was just good. He was a young bull of uh, Pete Farley's, and he said he didn't know what he was going to be like. It's the first time to a big show, so um, yeah, I'm going to take the score. Uh, I mean, it's, these events are hard getting on three in a row for me with my hands, so I'll, do, I'll be right. In the end, it'll, it'll work itself out. That left just one man yet to ride his first bull, American superstar Brady Sims. On a bull that is owned by the Farley brothers from Kempsey, this is mad at ya. Here he is. Oh, hey, look at this. Oh, my goodness. What a huge effort. Brady Sims. Sims taking the lead and delighted with his first effort on Australian soil. Uh, we got in yesterday, yesterday uh, about 7.45 in the morning. Got him rode like I come here to do, first time in Australia, figure started off with a bang. He kind of kicked out and looked left. I kind of moved over there and then he went back right and I really had to hustle to get set back down and ride him. Eight, eight and a half, I'll take it all day. After one round of competition, the American leads the standings ahead of rookie standout Clint Glass. Chris Lowe and Jason Mara split third and fourth, while Troy Wilkinson puts himself in great position moving into round two. Round two at the Brennan Clark Invitational and Mexican Gustavo Pedrero is looking to stay perfect on a difficult customer called Rockstar. Probably the ride of his career. Oh, come on, come on. Our first rider to go two for two, the Mexican champion was on fire. Looking to cover his second bull also was the young defending champion, Lachlan Richardson. His bull Black Dog proving a handful, even before they left the bucking chute. Lachlan Richardson fans, come on! Once again, our three protection athletes, Mitch Russell, Shane Mad Dog Simpson, and Daryl Chong in the thick of it as Lachlan tames Black Dog and extends his streak to five at Newcastle, still in with the chance of going back to back. 11 riders have completed their second round matchups at the Brendan Clark Invitational, and so far only two have managed to cover both their bulls. In the first round, our series leader, David Kennedy, was forced to withdraw after injuring his riding hand. He'll now have to sit by and watch as his main title challengers attempt to qualify for the championship round. However, before Kennedy's main rivals take to the stage, it's Brendan Clark with family, friends, and a legion of adoring fans looking on as he looks to stay alive in his last shot at his own event by covering a bull that has never been ridden before. Astro Boy. A professional bull rider. Let's see if he can get it done. Oh. Hey, here he goes. Come on.
It's the second time tonight a bull has fallen on Brendan Clark. Once again, he's offered a re-ride. This time, he has to take it. Yeah, that bull slipped over a little bit right out there. just trying to buck too hard. Um, got me sore knee up underneath him too. So uh, oh, they're going to run the same one back around. So he's good. He was bucking. So uh, hopefully he can keep his feet and I can stay on him. He'll be good. Dave Mason came into this event second in the series standings. However, after seeing the man he's chasing withdraw, he failed to convert with ride one. His second ride could prove the most important eight seconds of his year. Dave Mason is carrying the state of New South Wales right here. Mason keeping slim hopes alive of getting one more ride. This brings up another of our championship contenders, Troy Wilkinson. He was 85 and a half points on his first bull. This is Buck Owens. Buck Owens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, come on, Newcastle. Troy Wilkinson, the third man to go, two for two. Chris Lowe would go, looking to make his play in the series standings. Known as Mr. Consistency on tour, many would like to see him take the championship buckle. I've been pretty lucky, I haven't had any major injuries, so I think I've got a few years left in me yet. Let's do it with Chrissy Lowe, Freddie Lowe from Yarala, New South Wales. Chris Lowe more than a little pleased with his 88.5, our new event leader. Yeah, I was very happy. I was happy to come here and ride too, so yeah, it was real good. I'm sitting about fourth, so a win would help a lot. With our series leader, David Kennedy, already gone, a ride by Mick Ford here would also push David Mason, currently second in the standings, out of tonight's championship round. With Troy Wilkinson and Chris Lowe already qualified, it would certainly shake up the series standings. Qualified in the first round tonight with a mark of 85 points. Hey, Mick Ford from Orange, New South Wales. Mick Ford with an 84.5 on Applejack moves into fourth. American Brady Sims had the highest scoring ride in round one, but with a slew of riders covering their second bulls in this section, he'd still need to go the full eight seconds to put himself in good position. This is a great draw. The Phantom of George Hempen stalls. Phantom makes short work of the American. Now Sims will have a nervous wait, hoping his first round score is enough to see him through to the short go. With brother Lockie already qualified for the short go, Cliff Richardson could join him if he could cover Meet Jamaica. Let's rumble in the jungle. Mara had a chance to make the championship round, but missed out when he fell off his bull, Turbo. With brother Lockie already qualified for the short go, Cliff Richardson could join him if he could cover Meet Jamaica. Wow! So the two brothers would face off in the championship round. Oh, there's no rivalry, but we're both come here to win, so we'll just do our best and see what happens. This brought back the local hero, Brendan Clark, for his rematch with Astro Boy. Needing a second ride and a good score to ensure he would ride again in his hometown of Newcastle. Well, if there's ever a night, if there was ever a night that Newcastle could repay this man for what he's given to the sport of bull riding, it's tonight. And ladies and gentlemen, the stadium, let's bring the house alive when this man says bring it on. He's yours, he's Australian, and he's from Maitland, New South Wales. It's our champion, Brendan Clark!
Ladies and gentlemen, pay him off for what he is, a champion. So Brennan Clark leaves the dirt at his own event for what may be the last time as a writer. I'm not that disappointed in how I'm walking out of here if it was my last ride because I felt, I felt pretty good about how I tried. So I, It's just the way that it goes. I mean, yeah, I'm disappointed, but I give it everything I had. And uh, I mean, on good bulls, I'll get you on the ground even though you do that. And so our top eight were decided. Chris Lowe from Urala, New South Wales, leading the pack with seven of our eight qualifiers riding both their bulls, leaving American Brady Sims a big task to challenge for the win in the championship round. The championship round, known to Australian bull riding fans as the short go. Our top eight riders pick from our top eight bulls, and our leader, Chris Lowe, opts for a TNR bucking bull, get rich quick. Well, he's a bit more cowboy friendly, you know. Cowboys like to get on him, so yeah, he'd be just as hard to ride, but he's a good one to get on. He'll be the last to go, but first up, it's Brady Sims. The challenge of champions, it's about to unfold with our first cowboy, our first bull rider from Holt, Missouri. Well, that is one rank bull. So Sims will finish eighth, unable to handle the power of the John Gillen Sons bull. Next to go, Lachlan Richardson. One of your very own Hunter Valley Bull Riders, Lachlan Richardson. He decided to take on an unridden bull. This is suicidal. Come on, he needs to hear you. Well, that is a bull that is in contention for the PBR Bull of the Year. Folks, he's ridden two bulls tonight. He is still a Hunter Valley Cowboy. How about a big hand? The bull's on top early in the championship round and the pattern remained the same. 26 years of age from Gisborne, New Zealand. Babington, Bambi's blood. This is one of the biggest bulls that you're gonna see here. All right, come on, let's ride with him. Fraser, come on. Fraser Babington was unable to hold on to the brute of Bambi's blood for the full eight seconds. Next to go, our second Richardson. Cliff Richardson takes on a bull that has never, ever been ridden. Maximum destruction, making short work of it. However, with performances like tonight's, he has virtually locked up this year's rookie title. McFord was slowly climbing back into championship contention. Now David Kennedy was unable to ride and he would look for more points on Bring It. He decided to take this bull, Bring It. Another bull of Mitch Russell's has never ever been ridden. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to scream for Mick Ford. He needs you. Come on, Mick. Be the first. For a moment, Mick Ford looked likely to be the first. But then Bring It ensured the Bulls kept a perfect record so far in the championship round. 
Only three riders remained, and next in the shoot was Troy Wilkinson, currently sitting in third in the championship. His bull, a Kubra suicidal, and the ride on him would go close to claiming the series lead from Kennedy with just two events remaining. And yeah, this is a tough bull. He's unwritten in the PBI. Wilkinson, the number three man in the race for the championship. The John Gillen Sons mount just too strong for Wilkinson, and he would have to be content with the ground he had made up so far. The Brendan Clark Invitational, and we're deep into the championship round. Six riders have failed so far, and just two remain with a shot at the title. Mexican Gustavo Pedrero climbed onto his bull Hellsaw, looking to be the first rider on the night to remain perfect. We want, we want one qualified ride. Let's hope it's this time. Hey, come on, help him, help him. Oh, he is a superstar tonight. Gustavo Pedrero from Mexico becomes the first man to ride three bulls. Numbers coming through. Is going to go straight to the top of the leaderboard with an 88 point score. 88. An ecstatic Pedrero is the first of our final eight to go the distance and moves into the event lead. Just one man remains, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Chris Lowe sat in fourth in the championship coming into the Brendan Clark Invitational. The 28-year-old first faced off against Sin City. before a brilliant ride on Mud Bomb saw him take the event lead. A successful ride here would see him move into second in the series and likely secure him the Montana Silversmith Buckle as the Brennan Clark Invitational winner. All that stands in his way is a TNR bucking bull called Get Rich Quick.
And while all thoughts were with Chris Lowe, it was time to hand out the silverware. Appropriately, the man who risked his own to ensure the safety of our downed rider, Mitch Russell, is rewarded with a Montana silversmith buckle as his bull, Bring It, is awarded champion bull of the event. Then it is Mexican Gustavo Pedrero's turn to take center stage as he receives his prize as champion of the Brennan Clark Invitational. at all about the last one. End result, I'm fine and heal up and try again, I guess. I think I might find a helmet and try ride again at Sydney. <laughs> 